To earn your property adjuster certificate, recognized by a growing number of high quality firms, and get everything you need to get started as an independent property and auto adjuster, go to adjustertv.com slash path now. In this video, I'm gonna answer the question, how top adjusters close so many claims, starting now. This is Adjuster TV. Hey, it's Matt here with Adjuster TV, and for the best tips and tools for getting on the first call list as an independent adjuster, subscribe now. Click on the bell notification so that you never miss a video. Well, we've been in Las Vegas all week for the 44th annual NACA convention and job fair, talking to HR folks, recruiters, CEOs, and IA firm executives about all things claims. I checked in with Tom at Crawford & Company about one of the most common questions he gets from adjusters, and here's what he said. I'm here with Thomas Brocksmith from Crawford Claims, Crawford Catastrophe Services. You know, Crawford, okay. Crawford was one of the first IA firms I got on the roster with back in 1999, and I, I mean... Anyway, so I'm here, and we're talking about kind of the most common questions that IA firms get from new or even experienced adjusters when they're trying to get on the roster and they're trying to get work. And I'm here with Thomas Brocksmith from Crawford Catastrophe Services to kind of see the typical question that they get. The most typical question we get is, I've, I'm on your roster and I'm on several other rosters and I've been on your roster for two or three years. What does it take to get deployed with your firm? And it seems to be a, a, common, denominator, a common problem amongst IAs. The thing that I can tell you the most of that I see is, is build a relationship with the resource team. Um, call there once every two weeks or once a month and, and have a conversation with them. Just don't, don't just call up there and ask for work. Right. You know, um, hey, this is Tom, you got any work for me? No, we don't, it's slow. Okay, well call me if you need anything. You're not gonna be remembered that way. But if you call up and say, hey, listen, I just finished my TWIA cert, I, uh, uh, have two or three licenses that I, I just picked up my New York right, license. Right, New York license. I uploaded it in there, and this, 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 and that. And I've done these things. Um, really want you all to keep me in mind. How's it going? Are you busy? Have conversations. Get to where they know you. Because what happens is when we get deployments, I'll get you know say one, two, or ten, or twenty deployments. Um, the resource team will come to me and say, Hey, you know this Chris Smith guy or John Doe's been calling me. We really like him. Why don't you look at his resume? Can we deploy him? But there may be two or three other thousand people on the on the roster, maybe better than him, but they never call. They don't understand to do that. Right. So, build, build some relationships with the firms that you're with, and that that'll take you a long way. Yeah. This is this is a people person job. I Absolutely. Mean, face to face with the insured. You know, when you're dealing with your manager, your IA manager, your t your team manager, the carrier manager, the agents, and I I've, I said it in several videos before, even contractors. Mm -hmm. These are human beings, right? And developing relationships is one of the biggest things that, that I, people have said so far at the conference and what I believe uh, when we're talking about trying to get work and trying to, 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 to take our careers to the next level. Right, absolutely. Yeah. Back to you, Matt. Thank you so much, Tom. I really want to say thank you to everybody who took the time to chat with me and my guys here at the Adjuster TV booth. And a very special thanks to the NACA board for allowing me to come and cover their event every year. We've been having a great time, and I really feel that what we're doing is changing our industry for the better. So thank you very much. Okay, so here's the question. How do top adjusters close so many claims in a day? So if you've been watching Adjuster TV videos for long, you probably have gathered that I've been an adjuster for a very long time, and that I wouldn't have done it for this long if I was only able to close three or four claims a day. One of the best things about this work is that if I can figure out how to increase the number of claims I close in a day on a CAD deployment, that effort will show up immediately in my next paycheck. So how do I do it? How do I and other veteran adjusters do it? Well, there are a ton of ways, and certainly experience and muscle memory play a very large part in our success. But for me, the biggest thing has got to be going against my basic human nature. What does that mean? Here's what I mean. Humans are very, very easily distractible. If I go on Facebook to post up that I've got a new video out, for some reason I find myself looking at posts about the weather, adjuster questions, making cupcakes, 
pics of somebody's new car, something on the news I have to comment on. I mean, I can spend a half an hour scrolling through my feed and I did not go in there to scroll through my feed. I went in there to spend five minutes posting up that I've got a new adjuster TV video and what happened? I just wasted a half an hour because of my natural distractibility. So what do I really mean by this? How does this apply to claims handling? In a typical day of running cat property claims, we have a lot of tasks that we have to get done. If we don't, chaos will ensue. The best way to reduce those distractions that will de derail your day is to use something called time blocking. So what is time blocking? Time blocking is taking a specific task or set of tasks and doing them and only them in a set time window. So here's an example. For claims recon and routing, when I'm routing my claims and building out my schedule, I will take 90 minutes and do only that. I'm not watching TV, I'm not answering the phone or making any phone calls. Email is off, social media is off, you get the idea. After I've built my schedule, I will then start making outgoing phone calls. So I'm time blocking only outgoing phone calls. Make sense? I'm not accepting any incoming phone calls during this time. Incoming calls are gonna go to voicemail. Texts are gonna be ignored for now. So how does this help me close more claims? If I'm constantly letting things like phone calls and texts, which are inherently random, if I let those things distract me from what I'm focusing on, I will never get my work done. I'll interrupt what I'm doing to answer that call, and then when I go back to what I was doing, I have to start over or backtrack to get it done right. So picture this. You're in a meeting in a conference room with 10 other people. If I'm doing a presentation and my phone rings in the middle of me talking to people who have taken their time, taken time out of their day to have this meeting, I answer that call, what happens? I disrupt the meeting and I'm wasting everybody's time. If I get a lot of calls and we get a lot of calls as adjusters, that meeting will take all day. So as adjusters, we have to protect our time. We have to guard it. Treat every distraction as though it's a waste of your time and the time of others and that it's gonna start hurting your bank account as well. We protect our time with time blocking. You'll use time blocking to write estimates, to make phone calls, to set up claims, to document claims, do your inspections and so on and each of those tasks will get your full attention, right? Most importantly, without constant disruptions, that work will get done faster and arguably better. Question of the day, why didn't I see you at NACA? There are over 50 IA firms here. They were taking face-to-face -face interviews for three days. You wanna know who prefers to do face-to-face -face interviews? IA firms. For much more information about crushing it as an independent adjuster, head on over to adjustertv.com. And if you got value from this video, you can help me create more videos just like this by subscribing to Adjuster TV on YouTube. Wondering what to watch next? There are tons more videos right here on the Adjuster TV YouTube channel. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Have a great storm.